Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 21st, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Still running a website using Drupal? Well, it's time to patch again. This latest update addresses two different vulnerabilities. Now, the first of these vulnerabilities really fixes a bug in the external tar library. This vulnerability could be exploited to overwrite files on the system and in some cases, based on the files the attacker can overwrite, it could lead to arbitrary code execution. Now, tar, of course, is a tool that packs uh, various uh, files into an archive. When they're untarred, as it's often called, then of course there is a risk that file names inside the tar archive are being used to overwrite files on the system. And probably we're talking about a similar issue here where you can somehow bypass some of the file name validation being done. Now, the second issue deals with uh, PHP stream wrappers, and uh, that has been an issue that has led to a lot of problems in the past. In PHP, not all URLs are really created equal. There are some special URLs, these uh, stream wrappers, and in that case, the URL itself is actually then, for example, treated as a file or as code, and that can lead to problems. So in this particular case, if the URL starts with PHP, H-A-R or FAR, that means that the remainder of the URL is really a PHP code archive and that could be executed. Now, the problem, of course, is uh, that uh, as a software, like in this case, Drupal, accept URLs from users, they have to make sure it's not one of these special uh, stream URLs. And so far, PHP has not considered far stream wrappers as dangerous, which led to this arbitrary code execution vulnerability. Now, as far as this second vulnerability goes, Drupal says that usually uh, in Drupal, only administrators would have the ability to exploit this vulnerability, which of course makes it sort of a little bit less severe vulnerability. On the other hand, uh, this all depends on your particular configuration. And talking about Drupal, another large PHP package that I have often talked about in this podcast is WordPress. Now, WordPress often has issues with plugins. Uh, well, actually, Drupal 2. In this case, it's the WPML plugin. That's for WordPress multilingual. And this is a for pay plugin. So something you have to pay for, not a free open source plugin. Now, in this case, actually, it wasn't a vulnerability in the plugin. Instead, the company that actually produces this plugin was compromised by a former employee. Apparently, they didn't delete all of the SSH credentials for this particular individual and the, the former employee then used their SSH credentials to log in and then copy a list with all the names, email addresses and registration keys of WPML customers. The email complained about WPML having multiple security holes. It also complained about WPML's support. Now, WPML responded in a blog post. They said that the plugin itself was not compromised. It was just the data that was taken. Also, no payment data was compromised, only names, the email addresses, and then the registration keys. Now, these registration keys, uh, the attacker could use them to download updates from the WPML website. However, they can not use them to cause any real damage to any customers. At least that's from WPML's blog post. And Palo Alto Networks Unit 42 has a detailed write-up about a troach that they have seen in targeted attacks. In addition to using DNS for command control, which well is quite common in this case, they actually use some interesting domain names that would easily be mistaken for, for example, Akamai or Microsoft domains. This tool also uses Google Drive to exfiltrate data. And that's really sort of a tricky issue. 
these uh, cloud systems like you know Google Drive, Dropbox, uh, also a lot of sort of webmail systems are often being used for data exfiltration and that's sort of a difficult hole to close unless you either outright don't allow access uh, to these websites or you do some HTTPS interception, which tends to be difficult in particular with Google properties where for example, Google Chrome has uh, does a lot of additional certificate validation. Palo Alto does list a number of indicators of compromise, in particular the domain names you may want to take a look at to make sure that you didn't sort of you know consider them valid uh, because they sort of you know look like uh, they're associated with these fairly common domains. And if you were looking at Friday's packet challenge, uh, just posted the solution. The link will be added to the show notes. So take a look at it if you're interested. It was another DNS packet. Actually, nothing really malicious in this case. Really more sort of a misconfiguration, a buggy software a kind of a challenge. Well, uh, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.